Killing Floor 2 is a bloody and fantastic mess. Whether it's the impact of the guns, the guts of your enemies catapulting into the air, or the heart-pounding metal soundtrack. This is a zero bullshit game about pure, unadulterated fun. Killing Floor 2 has four game modes. The survival, the standard beat four to ten waves and a boss then win mode. Weekly, the same as survival but with an extra game modifier slapped on top to provide an extra challenge or just some laughs. Endless, survive as many waves as possible. And finally, Versus, where one team controls humans and the other team controls Zeds. But unfortunately, this game mode is pretty much dead due to its very unbalanced nature, so I won't really be talking about it. In your feeble attempt to not die, you can choose from a variety of different classes that support just about any playstyle. There's also quite a few different types of Zeds, such as the small and weak but dangerous in numbers clot, or the hulking beast with spinning arm blades flesh pound. Some Zeds explode, some scream really loud, and others just really want to vomit on you. Different Zed types mean that no matter what class you play, you'll still have a decent challenge. So if you're playing with friends, you'll want to run a variety of different perks to keep your team well-versed. But of course, the challenge depends on the difficulty you choose. The difficulty ranges from walk in the park normal, to why do I even bother hell on earth, with hard and suicidal in between. Suicidal being my favorite difficulty to play on. But the interesting thing about different difficulty settings is that it's not just a simple increase of Zed health and damage. It also totally changes their behavior, aggressiveness, and speed. The higher difficulty you play, the better the XP rewards, but the lower dash you get per round, meaning every shot counts. Don't miss. But at least there's something to help you with your mediocre aim. During each game, there's a random chance for Zed time to trigger, which is just a fancy term for slow motion. This allows you to carefully line up your shots and pop heads one by one. And while it seems simple enough, this is actually a really important mechanic to the game, and you'll see why later. There's also a pretty good amount of maps in the base game, but with Steam Workshop support, so you can download as many community-made maps as you want, but this goes about the same way every game with custom maps goes. Some maps are really good, so good, actually, that Tripwire officially puts them into the game, and some are so bad that you'll want to stab your eyes out with the back of your dad's rusty hammer that he used to build your house by hand in 1993. <laughs> it's like this loud, obnoxious, Wild West music that I can't turn off. Oh god, the, the, shadow, the shadows are completely broken. What? Oh, 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 it's an, it's an invisible barrier. Okay, okay. All right. And don't forget about the optional objectives that pop up from time to time. They'll give you the option to protect an area for a bit of bonus dash and XP, but on higher difficulties, these usually just end up being death traps. Is the game repetitive? Well, yes, it is. And despite the selection of maps, you're still doing the same thing every time you play. But if that's the case, why is this still my sixth most played game of all time? Well, it's a lot of the things that I mentioned before, but also... No one does guns like Tripwire Interactive. It's never felt so good to blast a Zed's head off. And you can do so with just about any type of weapon you can imagine. Whether you prefer sitting in the back with a sniper rifle, charging in with a katana, or just about anything in between, Killing Floor 2 has it. A good place to start is usually the Commando perk. Commando features a collection of assault rifles and an LMG. But it's so good for newbies because of its ability to spot invisible Zeds and display health bars over all enemies. But my personal favorite has to be Gunslinger. Gunslinger is all about dual-wielding pistols. Racking up consecutive headshots with dual pistols is one of the most rewarding experiences I've had in a game. Wait, hang on. One, two, three, four... Huh, yeah, that's, uh, that's four guns and two hands. Wow, impressive. Uh, anyways, where was I? Right. Some other perks also include Berserker, the melee-oriented psychopath, since you have to be a little bit crazy to want to get close to all those Zeds. Support, the shotgun-wielding death machine that can launch Zeds into the fucking stratosphere. The Field Medic, the one guy on your team keeping you alive that you should probably thank a little bit more often. There's still another five classes that I haven't mentioned here, but you get the idea. There's something for everybody. It's also worth noting that some guns have cross perk, which just means you can use the weapon in more than one perk. It's a nice addition made to the game sometime after release that allows you to mix up your loadouts a bit more. So, good gunplay is enough to keep me playing this game consistently for more than two years? Well, it's the small things that make a good game great. And it's the really small things that make a great game amazing. Let's take a closer look. Closer. Killing Floor 2's guns are animated at more than 200 frames per second, meaning that whenever Zed Time activates, those animations are still going to be really smooth. And it's not just the high frame rate, it's the incredible attention to detail. Individual parts of the weapon shake back and forth while firing, in an admittedly exaggerated, but also beautiful fashion. The game's sound design is already great, 
but it sounds just as good in slow-mo. Even if you don't notice these things while playing, the tiny details are still going to make the experience so much more enjoyable. So hats off to you, Tripwire Interactive. You've made some of the best gunplay ever. Gore. Violence. Viscera. Bloodshed. Uh, brutality. R ruckus? Hmm. Popping heads and removing limbs is what Killing Floor 2 is about. And it is so good. You can play Berserker and grab a katana to cut Zeds into pieces, or equip a grenade launcher and watch as Zeds explode into bits. And it doesn't even end there. Killing Floor 2 has a relatively new graphics setting called NVIDIA Flex. Flex is a particle-based simulation effect that depicts realistic bodies and fluids. I keep Gibbs on when I'm playing, and you've seen this effect throughout the rest of the video whenever there's intestines flying through the air. But you can also enable fluids, which normally I don't use because it has a very heavy performance impact on my computer, and it's difficult to maintain a steady frame rate. However, I couldn't simply gloss over this, so I recorded some 30 FPS footage to show you. With this setting enabled, Gore looks even more incredible. Sure, it's a bit cartoonish, but last I checked, we're not exactly playing a milsim game here. And after I eventually upgrade my computer to higher specifications, I'll certainly be playing with this option enabled all the time. So, fun gameplay, impactful guns, and beautiful gore. How could this game possibly get any better? Killing Floor 2 features a heart-pounding, intense metal soundtrack that matches the game perfectly. Most of the soundtrack is not written for the game, but they pick some great songs to play while you blast the shit out of everything that moves. There are songs from bands such as Impending Doom, Living Sacrifice, and my personal favorite, Demon Hunter. Then, the wave ends, and you make your way to the trading pod during the precious moment of silence that you have, before the next wave starts, and it's back to kicking ass or dying miserably. Seriously, the only thing I can imagine that would improve the soundtrack is muting the music and playing Doom's OST over it. But, to be fair, Doom's soundtrack goes great with just about anything. And of course, what would any game be without crates? But before you start writing a letter to Gabe Newell about how Valve should be abolished for allowing evil crates into your beloved Killing Floor game, remember that every single content update since release, which includes guns, maps, perks, and events, has been totally free. These are all things that affect gameplay. Skins do not. And the main reason I don't care about the option to pay to open crates in this game is because of the Dosh Vault. Completing daily and weekly challenges will earn you Dosh for the Dosh Vault. Once you earn half a million, which takes completing one weekly challenge, or ten daily challenges, you get a crate that doesn't cost anything to open. And anything you get from the crate cannot be sold in the market. The reason I think this is such a good system is because it provides the satisfaction of opening crates and getting cool skins, without turning you into a gambling addict maxing out your mother's credit card. Sure, I understand taking content out of a game and charging money for it is a scummy move, but these are all aesthetics. But as far as slapping these skins on your guns and characters goes, it's... alright, I guess? Don't get me wrong, I love customization in games as much as the next guy, but usually not in a first-person game. After all, if I can't actually see my own character's obnoxious hat, then what's the point of wearing it? Yeah, I know other players in your lobby can see it, but I feel like they'll be more impressed by your ability to kill Zeds than your gold-plated leather mask. I do occasionally find myself admiring some gun skins, which you've seen throughout the video, but even then there's only a few I care about. The rest I mostly got for free, and I equip them just because I have them. For gun customization to really matter, it would have to be more than skins. I'm talking attachments, like scopes, suppressors, and mags. I don't believe Tripwire's ever announced anything like this officially, and I won't fault the game for not including it. It's just something nice that I wouldn't mind seeing in the game. So, you've now seen a video about Killing Floor 2. Maybe you'll go buy it now. Maybe you already own the game and love it, but you're just looking for validation from some guy on the internet because you can't form your own opinions. Either way, thanks for watching. I've seen a lot of people requesting that I make a new video on Xanima, which I fully intend to do. It's just hard to find the time with all these projects. Especially since I'm working on a video discussing map editors and games. And also a 45-minute live-action short film for Absurd Entertainment, my other channel that I run with a buddy of mine, so feel free to click the link in the description to check it out. Or don't. I don't care. I'm not your mother. Goodbye. <laughs>